How many of you enjoy when your aiming plant corrodes? Hmm. How many of you love it when your aiming foams? I don't see a lot of hands going up. No, of course not. Nobody wants that. No one wants corrosion. No one wants foaming. Well, um, operating parameters are only one aspect of preventing those two things from happening. The aiming chemistry also plays a role, specifically heat stable aiming salts. Heat stable aiming salts are responsible for a boatload of aiming plant corrosion as well as can be linked to foaming. We are going to do a two-part video series on heat stable aiming salts. Part one is on what causes them. Part two is what to do about them. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Experts Network. Welcome back to the Experts Network. My name is Ben Spooner. I am a process engineer with Aiming Experts. And today's topic is on heat stable aiming salts. The question was posed as one of our LinkedIn viewers. They said, uh, can you guys talk about what causes heat stable aiming salts? So sure, no problem. That's a great topic. It's an important topic. And as we were putting this video together, we realized we got to make it a two-part video series. So part one, we're going to talk about what causes heat stable salts and furthermore, what are they even? And part two, we'll discuss a little bit of strategy on how to maybe prevent them or manage them. So let's get into this guys. First of all, the term salt, the term salt, basically what we're talking about there is an acid plus a base. So amine plus H2S, we form salts when we mix those two together. Amine plus CO2, they form salts, but they're not very strong salts. It's, it's not like a strong bond. And when we take those salts, run them through the regenerator and reboiler, the temperature in those areas of the plant is high enough that it causes the salt to disassociate back into its original components. We have amine here, we have H2S there, the two go their separate ways, and we have regenerated amine. Well, what a heat stable amine salt is, is when we have an acid stronger than H2S or CO2. It either enters the system directly or is formed within the system, and that acid bonds with the amine, same as your acid gas normally does, but the bond is, is much stronger, much more durable. And so even though we flow the amine through the regenerator, through the reboiler, boil it, all that stuff, we never get to a high enough temperature to actually cause that salt to break apart into its original components. And that's why we call them heat stable amine salts. Now, a lot of people will kind of abbreviate that to just heat stable salts, which technically is not necessarily the same thing as a heat stable amine salts. Um, basically in this video series and the one that you guys are mostly concerned about are the heat stable amine salts, where amine is kind of half of this molecule and the acid is the other half. So your amine is being tied up by that acid. Heat stable amine salts is what it, its full name is, a lot of times abbreviated to heat stable salts. So that's what they are. It is important to realize that amine degradation is a completely separate thing. Amine degradation is not the same as a heat stable amine salt. Uh, amine degradation is where we actually physically change the molecule of the amine into something else. It's not amine anymore. It's something evil and unholy it was never meant to be there in the first place. Uh, a heat stable amine salt means that amine's still there. It's just kind of been handcuffed by this acid that's bonded to it. If we've we have the right technology or the right chemistry, we can free that amine back um, into the great wide world and it can go back to reacting with H2S and CO2 like it was supposed to. So heat stable salts, not the same as degradation. Now, heat stable salts are kind of both good and bad for your amine system. Um, as far as what's good about them, we delved into this in great detail in our previous video series. I'm gonna to point to it right up here. It's the one on overstripping of amine. We talked about the concept of acid-assisted regeneration, very well documented, very well known. A little bit of heat-stable salts really helps us in the regenerator. We get very low lean loadings, okay? Especially important in low pressure systems like a tail gas treater. So we don't want 
want our heat stable salt to be at like absolute zero because then we have to use a lot more energy in our reboiler to get the low lean loadings that we want. So a little bit of heat stable salts is a good thing. Usually around half to one weight percent heat stable amine salts is uh, what we target. If we can really, it's not, they're not the easiest thing in the world to control, that's for sure. But that's the desirable concentration. Um, if we start going above one weight percent heat stable amine salts or around 5,000 ppm by weight anions, and we're going to talk a lot more about that sort of thing in part two of this video, uh, we start to move more into the negative side of heat stable salt. So the positive is that it helps regenerate, but the negative and there's a bit of a list here. Uh, the number one negative, the most well-known, is that they're corrosive. Strong acids, especially when we mix with high temperatures, are very corrosive to our aiming system, okay? Carbon steel, for sure, will corrode quite easily. Stainless steel is a lot more difficult, but you can definitely do it if you work hard enough at it. <laughs> um, so the heat stable salts are corrosive. And furthermore, a lot of the acid portion of a heat stable salt, these are organic acids, you guys, and those create an emulsion between amine and hydrocarbon. It's, uh, if you go back to our foaming video, we talk about how amine plus uh, organic acids makes shaving cream, all right? We don't wanna make shaving cream in our amine plant. And so we wanna keep the organic acids out. Those are also known as heat stable salts. So they cause corrosion, they cause foam, they do to a degree bind the amine and render it now inactive for further sweetening you know when the amine's already bond to one strong acid it's not also going to bind with h2s and so we do in effect lower the active alkalinity of our system to be honest most plants wouldn't really notice two three four five percent of their amine being bond by these strong acids um You'd have to be really running at like the limit of your amine system to say that heat stable salts have reduced our capacity, but it is theoretically possible. And the other thing to know about the heat stable salts that can kind of create confusion is uh, was detailed by my colleague Steve in his video up here on amine analysis. And that is that when you have an amine plus heat stable salts, it messes up your concentration titration. So if the lab's doing, you know, what trying to figure out what the amine strength is, if there's heat stable salts in there that artificially lowers the pH of the amine, and so you titrate less acid in there, the calculation, you know, uh, it, it looks like you have a lower amine concentration than you really do. So you got to be careful of your lab results when you have heat stable salts. Now, the question was, what causes them? Okay, there's really... Uh, it's hard to list every single thing that can cause a heat stable amine salt, but we're gonna name the top several anyways. Number one, oxygen. Ugh. Oxygen is brutal to amine systems. Very, very reactive with amine and causes a whole host of acid formation. So we wanna keep oxygen out of the system. Uh, elemental sulfur is another one that acts in a similar way to oxygen. It, it creates those same types of heat stable salts in the amine. We have uh, production chemicals or pipeline chemicals. Uh, a lot of times these may contain acids, you know, depending on what it is they're supposed to be doing out there in the field upstream of the amine plant, or maybe they're fracking the, the, the ground so we can get the oil and gas out of it. Those may contain uh, chemicals that would form heat stable salts. We have hydrogen cyanide. Okay, a very common thing that most refiners deal with to a certain degree, hydrogen cyanide, very reactive with amine. And then finally, a couple of sort of outliers would be, like if you used a chemical to clean the plant, maybe an acid to, to help clean your amine system, but then didn't properly flush it out before refilling the system with amine. You start the amine plant up and all right away, the amine's got a bunch of heat stable salts in it from that. And furthermore, it could be from poor quality makeup water. And what we're mainly worried about there is chlorides, okay? Chlorides, kind of a weak acid. They come in and they can bind with the amine and form a heat stable salt that way. So those are sort of our list of the main things that we have seen causing heat stable amine salts. Uh, in part two of this video series, we're gonna discuss 
A, how to know of, of, of this big long list, which of them was causing my particular heat stable salts. And then probably even more important than that, what do I do about it? So thank you very much for watching part one of our heat stable aiming salt video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss when the next episode comes out. You ding the bell so you're automatically notified. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Experts Network.